welcome back to my channel. My name is Betsy and today I want to talk about bugs. I want to talk about six very common houseplant pests, how to prevent them, what to do if you've got them. Scale, mealybugs, aphids, thrips, white flies, and spider mites. How would you even get bugs in the first place? Especially in the winter when your windows are closed. How do they get in? You go to the garden center, you check a plant over, you don't notice any adult insects on it or anything like that, so you bring it home. What you don't know is that there's larvae in the soil or there are eggs on the plant that you don't see because you don't have a, you know, a jeweler's scope. And after you bring that plant home, those eggs hatch or the larvae turn into adult bugs and suddenly you have a pest infestation and you have no idea how it got there. How do you prevent pests in the first place? Well, when you're at the garden center and you see a pretty new Hoya and you really want to bring it home, inspect it. Take a really good look. Get out your magnifying glass and see if there are any mealybugs or aphids or any kind of insect looking thing. See if there are any eggs, especially on the stem and especially where the leaves meet the stem. Check all of those areas because that's really where like aphids and mealybugs like to hang out. If you're buying your plants online, it might not be possible to check them over yourself. So just be sure to read reviews of the vendor to make sure that there aren't like a ton of people complaining that they had pest infestations after they bought plants from that vendor. You can always treat plants as you bring them home. So you can have like a, a solution, like the one that I'll talk about in a little bit, and just spritz over the plant before you put it on your shelf with your other plants or keep it quarantined for a little while if you're really not sure if it has bugs or not. But that will ensure that, you know, if it does have bugs that you missed with your own bare eyes, it'll kill them. And as a general preventative measure, a really good habit to get into is to just treat your plants with some sort of really gentle, insecticide solution, which I'll get into, uh, once a month. And then that will ensure that no pests can really set into your plants. Another couple of tips that I would give, keep the air really humid. You know, if you're not talking about succulents or cacti, keep the air really humid because pests like thrips or spider mites really hate high humidity and damp conditions. So they'll often set in when a plant is going through drought stress. So water your plants regularly and keep the air really humid. Another really good habit is to dust your plants at least once a month with a dry microfiber cloth, something really gentle, because spider mites are attracted to dust. So what do you do when you already have a pest infestation? How do you treat it? How do you get rid of them? If you have scale or mealybugs, aphids, thrips, or white flies, there's a list of treatments that you can use that should get rid of all of those. You can start rubbing them and picking them off with your hands. Anything that you can see, you can just rub them off. Mealybugs are especially easy to pick or, or squish with your fingers. If you think that's gross, use gloves. I don't know what to tell you. You can also put it in the shower or take it out to the garden and power wash the plant. You know, you don't want to blow its leaves into tomorrow, but it can be a really therapeutic experience to just power wash those puppies right off. One of the most common treatments for all of these pests that should wipe all of them out is organic neem oil. You should be able to find it in your garden center, but if you can't, you can order it online. I ordered mine online. Um, it's not a toxin or a poison. It just messes with the brains and the hormones of bugs so that they will stop eating, they'll stop mating, and eventually the infestation will die out. So you can create a solution with this. You would use one and a half teaspoons of neem oil, one teaspoon of a mild dish soap. Make sure it doesn't contain bleach or you'll destroy your plants and mix those with one liter of water. The dish soap should kill bugs on contact, but it also helps the oil and water mix together to create a solution. Spray that all over your plant, top to bottom, every nook and cranny. And if the dish soap doesn't kill all of the bugs on contact immediately, you'll notice the infestation will die out within a few days. You should also be able to get a hold of horticultural oils at your local garden center uh, or online. Horticultural oils are used in organic farming. They're usually petroleum or vegetable based. I have one here that's made of rapeseed, rapeseed oil. Yes, you heard me correctly. And this is more like a, sometimes it's called a summer spray, an ultra fine spray, or you can find something called an all seasons oil spray. And that's usually something that's on the lighter side. You'll want to avoid dormant oils because those are used on woodier plants like trees, apple trees, things like that outside. They're just a bit heavy for house plants and it's a little bit of overkill. No pun intended. Horticultural oils basically smother the bugs. They can't breathe, they suffocate, they die. Um, you don't want to put it on plants that are in direct sun for a few hours because the oil attracts heat and it could burn the leaves of the plant if they're in direct sun for too long. 
And you also don't want to put it on plants that are in 90% or higher humidity because the oil is meant to evaporate naturally from the leaves. And if the humidity is really high, it prevents the oil from evaporating and it can affect your plant. Diatomaceous earth is also a good solution as long as your house plants are indoors and they're not outside where pollinators can access them. This also kills honeybees and butterflies and other pollinators. So you don't want to use it on any plants that are in bloom and accessible to beneficial insects. Basically, this is ground up sedimentary rock that gets into the cracks and crevices of bugs' bodies, so it kind of stops up their movement and they eventually die off. And it also kills larvae by drying them out. So it's a really good solution as long as it is not accessible to pollinators. If you don't have all of those things on hand and you need to take care of your pests right freaking now, uh, you can just use a really simple solution of one liter of water, one teaspoon of gentle dish soap with no bleach, and one tablespoon of I use 90% rubbing alcohol and mix that up, spray it all over the plant on every single nook and cranny, and that should wipe out your pest problem. It should work. The only time that didn't work for me was when I had a serious aphid infestation on one of my outdoor plants, the jasmine on my balcony. It, I had a ton of aphids. It was a really big problem, and I used this solution, and it just didn't work. I gave it like a week, and the aphids were still there. So I ended up using horticultural oil and that did the trick. It killed the aphids. I also later learned that flour will get rid of aphids. You can put flour all over the plant because it constipates them. They'll eat the flour and they'll become constipated. So it sounds like a really terrible way to die, but they're aphids. Screw them. And there's one pest that I haven't talked about yet. Spider mites. If you have spider mites, burn your house down. Burn it to the ground, collect the insurance money, move to another state, change your name, they will find you. Spider mites are notoriously impossible to deal with because they're usually unaffected by insecticides that would normally kill other pests. And they're really tiny, so you don't realize that you have them until you have a serious infestation and they've taken over your entire plant. One of the first signs that you'll notice is like little little spider web like things between the leaves of your plant. And as soon as you see that, you need to run. Quarantine the plant, cut off any branches or leaves that are already infested with spider mites. It might mean that you're gonna have to like cut your plant to bits. And I'm super sorry about that, but that is the fastest way to get rid of spider mites because they are such horrible little monsters. It might also mean that you need to get rid of the plant if it's a bad enough infestation. If you really cannot, under any circumstances, imagine getting rid of that plant, you need to keep it away from all your other plants during the full treatment until you're super, super duper sure that there are no spider mites on it. Power wash the plant, like I said earlier, with a shower head nozzle or a garden hose, and try to get off as many spider mites as you can just by washing the plant with water. Then you can treat your plant with any of the solutions that I talked about earlier, but the ones that are probably going to work the best are the neem oil treatment or horticultural oils. Those are proven to work pretty well on spider mites. And you'll want to do that every few days or on a weekly basis until you're absolutely positive that there are no spider mites left. And that just about covers everything. Those are my preventative measures and solutions for most pest problems, aphids, scale, mealybugs, thrips, whiteflies, and spider mites. If you like this video and you want to see other houseplant related videos, check out my channel or subscribe. I put out one video per week. If you have any comments or questions, leave it down below. I'll get back to you. And I just want to thank you so much for watching. I hope you have a wonderful day and I'll see you soon.